Okay, right. Remember yesterday the question I left with you uh, other before the talk on CERN trip? Um, <laughs> before the very <laughs> depressing talk. <laughs> um, and uh, we talk about something else. We talk about force, energy, same, same, same. Yeah? Yes, and um, today we're going to take a look at the relationship between force and energy. And I'm going to show you some, some examples that will throw you off the chair. <laughs> As though it's not enough. You, you'll start wondering, eh? Eh? <laughs> then we'll try to resolve the eh uh, later. Okay? Let's, so let's begin with fundamentals. Work done is equals to, come on, you did this in... Force times displacement. Wrong. 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 Force times displacement, parallel distance, wrong. Yes, in the direction of the force. Very important. Of the force. Uh, there are a few scenarios over here. Why is this important? Because in the La La Land, uh, in the exam La La Land, in the O-level exam La La Land, it's always this and this. Agree? Or? Yeah, in the O-level exam La La Land, it's always like this. But in the real life, it can be highly possible that it can be like this, like this. You know, sometimes it is like this, like this. Then sometimes the displacement can also be like this. You know, there's so many ways that things can exert the, a force and there's so many ways that the object can move. Right now, so this is actually in the exam La La Land, but this is probably in real life. So how do we take into account this? Why is this a more general definition? So let's say, for example, if you've got a force this way and you've got a displacement this way, there are two ways of looking at things. First way, the force and displacement in the direction of the force. So you resolve displacement. And why is it that it must be displacement? Because distance cannot be resolved. It has to be displacement because it's a vector. Cannot resolve distance because it is a scalar. So if this is theta, can you see that this is d parallel and this is going to be d perpendicular? d parallel to the force, d perpendicular to the force. Agree? So, d parallel, do you agree with me that this is d cos theta? Typically? Okay? So, therefore, work done is equals to f d cos theta. Now, the second way of looking at this is to take the force that is in the direction of the displacement times the displacement. Then what you do is, you will have a force this way, you got a displacement, then you resolve your force parallel and force perpendicular to displacement. And you'll still arrive at the same conclusion, that it is F cos theta times D, which gives you F D cos theta. So either route, um, you'll get the same answer. I don't know whether you've been taught this in moments, uh, not in IBM, but in moments, Remember this, if you have this force, and this is d, this is theta, what's the perpendicular distance? In the exam, la la land, you always do this, la. your force always vertical. On. So in this one, what's the perpendicular distance? d? How, how, do, you, how, yeah, how do you find the perpendicular distance is this? Uh, d sine theta. Yes, 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 sine theta, yes. <laughs> You're correct, yes. So it's d sine theta. Have you learned cross product, dot product? Vector cross, vector dot? You haven't, no, okay, fine. So this is the perpendicular distance, but the other way of looking at this is that you can resolve the force, and this is f sine theta times d. So either you resolve the force or you resolve the distance, the displacement. Okay, so either way works, just like this one. Just that this one we look at parallel component, this one we look at perpendicular component. Cool? Okay. Three implications. Three implications are huh? this one, implication one. If the theta is equal to zero, that's the exam la la land situation, FD. Simple. Now, two, W D equals to FD if it is theta equals to 180 degrees, cos 180 degrees is equal to negative FD. Why do you have a negative sign? Now work done becomes a vector quantity. Right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I thought work done is scalar. How come got negative? No, oh dear, the world crumbles. <laughs> hey, hang on. Uh. Is energy vector or scalar? 
Scalar, huh? <laughs> you add 5 joules of light to 10 joules of light, you don't need to take the light direction kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so, why the negative sign? I thought negative only comes in when we talk about acceleration, velocity, displacement, force. So what does negative sign in work done mean? Okay, this is a very important idea. That work done is equal to change in energy. In light of this, if this is negative, what does it tell you about the change in energy? It is a reduction in energy. So what sort of scenarios do we have a theta of 180 degrees? Your velocity this way, a car, when you jam brake, what's the direction of the force? This way, right? Do you agree that this and this is 180 degrees? What happens to the car's KE? What happens to the car's mm -hmm. KE? Force or increase? False, exactly. So that's why it's a negative work done, which results in a reduction in energy. It has no implication or direction. It just tells you whether the energy increases or decreases. Full stop. Can you must be uh, you must be very clear about the negative signs meaning. Can must be clear about this, huh? Third case. Without the use of calculator, can you tell me what is cos ninety? See, that's the problem of using excessive coffee. One! One! <laughs> 0, 30, 60, 90, you must know one. Like cos 60 is half, sine 30 is half, special angles, yeah? So it is zero. What does it mean? It means this. It means if one day you want to buff yourself up, and uh, for whatever reason, health and fitness club probably. <laughs> Anyone over here in health and fitness club? No one else other than Reagan. Okay. Now, which means that you hold this, what's the direction of force that I apply on the laptop? Alright, okay, if I'm really moving, if I'm already moving at constant speed, uh, do you agree that there's no net force on this object? So the force I apply is up, which is this direction, but my displacement is here. No work done, no? No work done, no? But do you feel tired? Probably not, la, because it's one laptop, right? But if I give you a 20 kg mess, If I give you a 50 kg mess, hold and walk. I'm sure that you perspire. Or the other scenario, you hold a 20 kg mess like this. And then you don't move. Got force, no displacement. But do you feel tired? You do. So how do you reconcile all these things? First, let's go back to the case. Why is it that when I apply a force upwards and then I move this way, there's no work done? No force in the direction of displacement. So we're going back to the to the to this one. But the more important thing is the physical significance. What do we mean by no work done? Because you do feel tired. So when we talk about work done in physics context, uh, you must always remember this. There must be a change in energy. That's how we define the energy. That's how we understand energy. That is when we do work, it must result in a change. So whatever you do, uh, if it doesn't result in change in energy, we say no work done. But that doesn't mean that there's no energy expended. <clears throat> Say for example, the case where <clears throat> you hold a mess like this for one hour, your hands will start to shake. Obviously, energy has been converted from your body to other forms of energy. Right? So energy is converting. But there is no work done because by definition, if you do any work, it must result in this. Yeah? So your body, what happened is that, correct me if I'm wrong, the body chemistry needs to constantly convert um, chemical reaction and all these things so they can sustain the force. So in physics term, we say that in that kind of case, it's zero efficiency. Not that there's no work conversion, uh, it's zero efficiency. There's no work, effective work done because there is no change in KE or PE. That's how we understand work done. Yeah? So you must understand the frame of mind uh, that, that this is how we define. Doesn't mean that no energy conversion. You need to be very careful about this. Cool? Okay, so let's take a look at... Um, I cannot assume safely that you know what is half mv squared and mgh. Yeah. Sure, no. no, no you know, ah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, know, you sure you know? Ah. <clears throat> same, 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 same. Yeah. Mgh, uh, half mv, same, same. Just equal, ah. Don't know, don't know how to do. Just mgh equals half mv squared. Ah. <laughs> Confirm correct one, ah. <clears throat> Is this statement correct or wrong? <laughs> 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 
MGH is the gravitational potential energy of the mass at the point. <laughs> careful, ah, uh, careful. <laughs> Tread carefully. Yes or no? How many of you say, okay, MGH is the gravitational potential energy of a mass at a point? Okay, let me add in, uh, in case you don't uh, play cheat, uh, of a mass at a point. Yes or no? 10 seconds. <laughs> How many of you say yes? <laughs> yeah, okay, why not? Okay, okay. <clears throat> How many of you say no? Okay, 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 can. Yeah, I think I heard some words, which is quite correct. And how many of you don't know? It's okay if you don't know. It's okay, can, can, good. <laughs> it's like the class motto, six point, uh, five point thirteen, same, same, same. Okay, so say for example, if I move this object over here from here, this object over now here, MGH is the potential energy at this point. <laughs> you see the dilemma is this the dilemma is this huh? <clears throat> let me show you what's the dilemma if I got two objects A and B and this is both are 1 kg and I move this over a height of 1 meter so I move this to the height A goes to this point and I move this 1 meter and this is here so do you agree that the, if, we, if we go by that statement MGH at this point will be 10 joules MGH at this point will be 10 joules. Agree? Is it the change in energy? That's correct. So you see, if, you are, if I say that MGH is the gravitational potential energy at the point, it means that the gravitational potential energy at this point is 10 joules. The gravitational potential energy at this point is also 10 joules. Which cannot be. We know for sure that the potential energy over here is definitely higher than here. So it is wrong of us to say that the gravitational potential energy is this. It's wrong, huh? It is MGH is the change in GPE. Be very careful about this. It is still not complete. There is a, an assumption. There's an assumption about this formula. <laughs> G is approximately constant. Or the other way of phrasing this is, this is small. How small is small? How, what do you think we should compare? to decide whether it's small or big. Compared to a height, one kilometer is actually big, right? Compared to the radius of Earth's orbit, it, it's small. So what do we need to compare to so that we know that whether it's small or big? Compared to what? The what? <laughs> what creates gravitational field in, in our context? What creates the G? The mass of the Earth, right? So. Um, and the further we are from the center of the earth, the lesser the g will be. Agree? Okay, okay? So, therefore, what do you think you should compare it to? Yes, you kind of get it. Basically, you need to compare it with the radius of the earth. How big is the earth? Do you know what's the radius of Come on, as earthlings, you cannot not know. <laughs> it's like, where's your home? How big is your home? Uh, I think it's a four room. I think it's a three room. I don't know where. <laughs> How can it be? I don't know which level my home is at. What? 6,400 6, km. km. Yes, correct. So what do you think is big? What, what's the distance that you need to move H2 before you say that's big? What's your take? 6,400 km is the radius. Huh? That means we are already at 6,400 km from the center of the Earth already. So what distance do you think you should move to, to consider it big? Oh, it's got feel. Anyone? <laughs> if you're at Everest, yeah, from Earth, from sea level to Everest, is that considered big? By the way, do you know how tall is Everest? No? Come on, again, as Earthlings, come can you not know the most important feature? <laughs> 8,800 uh, 8, meters or kilometers? Meters, uh, <laughs> 8.8 8 kilometers divided by 6,004, is it 1%? Is it even 1%? Come on, 1% or 6,000? It's 0.125% about there. Yeah? So actually, even if you climb to Everest, uh, it's okay. Eh? Right? It's only a 0.125% change. 
the G will probably be 9.81 at the bottom of Mount Everest and at the top probably is 9.8 kind of thing. So it's okay. Unless you talk about launching satellites, ah, then you need to take on consideration this way. Cool? So summary, point number one, MGH is not the GPE. We'll talk about that in topic uh, six, or topic 10. Then this one, even if you use this one, you need to be aware that the H must be small compared to the radius of the Earth. Cool? So when we talk about big, small, good, bad, it's always relative. Huh? It's always relative. Can? You may be the top in Singapore, but you go outside this small. Can? Now let's see whether you can apply all these things um, in questions. Then I'll give you an example that will be quite... Mm, why? <laughs> okay, let's start off with something that is encouraging first. Huh? <laughs> this is 6 meters. Find the speed of the object when it hits the ground. If you don't know this, I'll be very concerned. The second part of the question is more interesting. Nine point eight one, by the way. Nine point eight one. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So you square root of two times nine point eight one times six. Right. That would be the speed with which it hits the ground. The more interesting question is, if it hits the ground and goes into the ground by 3 centimeters, what's the force that the ground exerts on the object? <gasps> you mean the thing goes into the ground? <laughs> you mean the ground lost the fight? <laughs> People, can someone shout to me the answer for the speed? 2 times 6 times 9.81, that's 12 times about 10, 120, that's about 11, 10 point something? 9.8, yep. yep. Okay, good. Now, how do you do this? You give it a try, I'll give you 2 minutes, then I'll show you the system. Not, not the answer, not the solution, the system to solve this kind of problem. We should always work on the system. Anyone got 9720? <laughs> uh, try, try, try. Get 9720 first. If, <laughs> in case you can't even get 9720. <laughs> try, try, try. So, let's describe the scenario. Uh, what happens is that when the object hits the ground, the ground reduces the Ke to zero. Yeah. yeah. So the work done by the ground, which is force times distance, must be equal to the Ke. Yeah. Cool. Nine seven two zero. Can. Nine seven two zero, right?
Everyone got 9720? Congratulations, you got the wrong answer. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, ow, why? Cheat my feeling. <laughs> Let, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see. The, 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 the steps is, is more important. But if, okay, if you, if you got 9720, you assume that the, the work done by the ground reduces the K to zero, right? Agree or not? Yeah? What happened to the loss in GP? <laughs> yes, you forgot about that. And that's one of the most common mistakes in this kind of question. Yeah, Ken? But the, the, if you use 9720 is fine. What you should do is 9720 is the force by the ground minus the weight equals, oh sorry, is force by the ground minus the weight equals to 9720. Then you get the correct answer. You just need to add the weight. Ken? So what you found is the net force. 9720 is the net force causing the deceleration. Now this is a very common issue when you get something but you don't really understand what that F means. Yeah, you have to be very clear what the F means. So the system to go about this kind of problem is work done by the ground um, X is equals to the change in energy which is equals to GPE final minus GPE initial um, plus Ke final minus Ke initial and you're going to find that this is negative number because this we treat it as zero the final position we treat it as zero this is also zero so if you add this two up it will definitely be a negative number yeah and then the F that you get, you just need to divide this number by 0 0.03, you're going to get this plus this. And see how? And you'll be a negative number. What does negative mean? It means that the force is pointing up. Yes, correct. Because we have taken downwards to be positive. Careful, this is a very common I, I set this question up in waiting for people to fall into the pit. Just be mindful. Yeah, mindful, mindful. Xiao Sing, Xiao Sing. <laughs> okay. Finish this part and then I'm gonna show you. A question that is an uphill task. Do you need me to show you the full working for this one? Do you need me to show you the full working for this one? Yeah, I don't even know. I don't think we had it very much. Mm. This one is important. This is the one that you missed out just now. If you get 9720. Yeah. And it's optically very easy to miss out because, you see, if I were to say that it drops by 3 meters, would you have missed it out? No, yes, correct. Yeah, because it's 3 centimeters. Can? Optics, uh, this is really about optics. Now, if you're done with this, can you try this? It's a very uh, simple problem. There doesn't need new equations. Half mv squared mgh fd. Uh, just that you need to be careful with something. It also has your understanding of the equations. Give it a try. Give it a try. Two, three minutes later, I'll show you step by step how to do it. Can, can, can. So F grounds times X equals to minus MGH. Uh, no, this is positive MGH. Uh, is it positive or negative? Let's see. Final, we take downwards to be zero. Minus MGH. If 
we take initial to be zero, then this will be what's the mass that I give just now? Five kg or six kg? Five, right? So basically what you missed out is the weight for 9720. Okay? Give this one a try. Can, can, but uh, that means you take 6 meters plus point. Yes, can. So it's MGH, the H is 6.03. Can. can. Because this is actually MGH, which is 6 meters, remember? Correct. Probably because of truncation. Because this is 10.8 something, something, something. I guess the difference is slight. Yeah, yeah. The difference is slight. Huh? Because the only difference is actually this one. Mm. Because this essentially is MGH. Right? This is MGH, <coughs> which is MG times 6 meters. So it should be the same. Work done by F. Work done by friction. Then you take this plus this equals to okay, K final. Agree? <laughs> Whatever he say, don't believe. <laughs> Whatever he say, be careful. <laughs> So how do you find KE final? <clears throat> do you manage to get one, one, two, zero joules? Agree? Fair enough. You take this minus this gives you this. Nah, 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 nah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So how? Is it correct or? <clears throat> yes, GPE. <clears throat> GP is 8 times 12 times 9.81, correct? 8 times 9.81 times 12. Agree? <laughs> yeah, well, so what? This MGH what? <laughs> okay, work done is equal to change in energy, which is equal to... Uh, plus work done against friction, yeah? So this is 1600 equals to GPE increase, which is MGH. Now, back to, the, uh, back to concept, the H must be in the same direction as MG, as in vertical. So you cannot take 8. It is actually 4. 8 sine 30 is 4. Plus half MV square, plus work done against friction. Then all you need to do is to transfer everything else onto the other side, and you'll get the answer. Yeah. Careful, huh? So what is this question testing? Whether you're careful enough to consider all forms of energy that the work done is transferred to. Second, whether the H you're careful enough to take the vertical height.
Okay, no. Anyone would like to shout out the answer for V? This is wrong, by the way. <coughs> that is wrong. That is just taking this plus this. You not consider MGH. So ah, if it is a flat plane, then you just be this plus this. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> That's why I say it's an uphill task. It's more difficult. <laughs> Now, if I exert, I think most of you, okay. Can someone just shout the answer number so they can cross-check? Sorry? 10.4. Anyone? Got the same answer? Same, same, same. Twelve, 12 times 9.81 times uh, 4. 48 times 9.81 is 480. That will be about 640. 640 times 1280 divided by 12. 1000. You sure? <laughs> no, no, 10 by 4 is what he says is the answer. <coughs> what do you get? 16.4. 16 16 16 okay, that's very interesting. We got different answers here. Let's go. Cool. Oh, shit. Uh, hey, relax, relax. It's very really recorded. Uh. <laughs> Anyone got a different answer? Come on, shout out your answer. 13.5. 13 by... Okay. Okay, let's check. Huh? So 1006 is equals to minus 480 plus half mv square. Um, actually, it's plus 4, 480 because minus 480 is if you were to put it on this side. Is it? Okay, then plus 4, 12 times 9.81 times 4. So half mv squared is equals to 1600 minus 480 minus 2 times 9.81, not 2, 12 times 4. Then you find v. Want to work out your answer based on this? Elio, what's your answer? Okay, but do you get this working? Yeah. yeah, so then it's evaluation really. The more important thing is do you understand why is it this way? Mm. The, yes, exactly. The word use is correct. The energy that you do, work that you do is converted to the different forms of energy. Okay? The description is important, no? not just the equation. The description is important. <clears throat> cool. Anna, <laughs> ah, yo, I told I, I said 8 side 30 already. That's why I kept saying 4, 4, 4, not 8 for H. No, I just forgot to press it. Okay, okay. Ken, people, are we ready to move on? Now, if I got an object, if I got an object 40 newtons, if I got a 40 newton force exerted on a mass over 8, new, uh, over eight meters, do you agree that the force displacement graph looks like this? Yeah. Sometimes it, there's no trick. Uh. Sometimes there's no trick. <laughs> sometimes there's trick, sometimes there's no trick. Yeah. So is the, is the, okay? Yeah. Can I? This force against displacement. It's a constant oh. force. Ah, nah, no trick, uh, no trick, no trick. Relax, no trick. Uh. <laughs> it's not everything also got a trick, guys. Right? Okay, 40 Newton over 8 meters. Constant force. Work done is equal to force times displacement in the direction of the force, right? Which is 40 times 8. If I take 40 times 8, what am I trying to find? What am I? Exactly. So, this is a very important idea. 
area under Fx graph is equal to work done. Area under Fx graph is work done. Be very careful, check out for the units in the y and x axis. If I were to set a question on this, I'll confirm stem job, give you kilo, newton, and centimeters. Confirm, stem job. <laughs> I'll confirm, give you kilo, newton, and yeah. If I'm nasty enough, I may give you mega newtons. So. <laughs> mega newtons and millimeters. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's why Basel physics, all right? Habits of looking at axis and the units. Let's try a question, shall we? <laughs> Here it goes, huh? What do you think? No friction other than this two, this, this thing. Careful, huh? Be very careful about what? Look at the diagram. Units is one thing. Second? The direction, huh? Careful, huh? Careful, be very careful. Why? Because I love to torture. <laughs> Because it's conceptual. So you have to figure out. Ah. Positive work done or negative work done? You're going to find something very interesting. You're going to find something very interesting. It's intentionally set in a way that you say, okay, eh? 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 Try out, try out. You're going to get complex numbers. Uh. <laughs> you try, you try, you try. You'll see what I mean. I think, I set the question such that I think you'll get complex numbers. <laughs> Let me see, yeah. Uh. Same, same, same. Yeah. I must, I must die, die, get a complex number. Yes. Good job. You're going to get complex numbers. <laughs> so is it positive work now or negative work now? The force is this way. The object is moving this way, right? Positive work now or negative work now? <laughs> Uh, oh no! <laughs> positive or negative? I was trolling. This is a real question, okay? Positive or negative? Very important question. You figure it out. You figure it out. <laughs> You figure it out. It's a very important question. Because, okay, you're going to find out, you're going to find out. Gonna, I, I shall not take the pleasure out of discovery, the pleasure of discovery away from you. <laughs> By definition, force is this way, displacement this way initially, so it should be negative work done. Yeah? And negative work done, why? Because it should reduce the KE. Make sense, right? Ah. Try, 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 try. <laughs> no, no, no friction. No, 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 relax, 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 relax. If I add friction, you blow the mind even further. <laughs> it's just F and velocity. Anyone got complex number here? Square root of negative 400. Or square root of negative 800. <laughs> Congratulations, you end up exactly where I wanted you to end up. <laughs> there is a trap, and it's related to what she asked. You see, does the object stop? 
it actually stops. And what happens after it stops? Does it stay at rest? It stops and then it... So there is positive work done and negative work done in one question. So you have to find how much energy it is required to reduce it to zero first. Then the remaining energy actually speed it up. You get the idea? Yeah. So say for example, if it is 1,000 joules negative work, work negative 1,000 joules that work done over here, say for example. And then the K over here is only 600 joules. Huh? That means 600 joules is used to slow it down. And 400 joules is used to speed it up. Yeah? So if you just put negative 1,000, you're going to end up with a negative V square. So if the work done is 1,000 by the force, the mega Newton thing, and the Ke is initially 600, say for example. So 600 is used to slow it down, and then 400 is used to speed it up. Okay. Personally, my favorite question. It looks really simple. Just half times base times height, all right? <laughs> Then only then you realize that hey, hey, there's a knife in the there's a razor blade in the in the mango. <laughs> yes. Um that means from the force perspective, I'm keep on exerting it this way. It's the distance over which the F exerts. I know what you mean, uh, that means the F should actually the X should actually so the x over here is the distance over which the f exerts. It's not measured from a reference point. Yes, you can say distance, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a distance over which the force exerts. Ken, so careful, huh? don't just always add. Huh? Be sensitive to this kind of thing. It's, you need to be sensitive, Ken. Go on, my, my blown enough right here. We still got half an hour. Still got half an hour more <laughs> of brain exercise. No la. Hey, no, no, no. This is these are these are really the creme de la creme kind of questions. Yeah, <laughs> really solid questions. Most of the time, most of the time, the object will just slow down in the same direction, so you don't have to worry too much. Oh, or most of the time, it be object at rest, find the final velocity. Kind of question. Can? Mega Newtons, uh, what is times 10 to the power 9? Giga. 12? Tera. 15? Uh, <laughs> never mind, I never deal with that. <laughs> what is minus 12? Minus twelve. Oh, lima. <laughs> then satu. <laughs> then satu. What nonsense, man. Pico. Pico is quite cute, uh, the name. Pico. Pico. Ah, Pikachu. Then Femto. Then Eto, Yokto, Zokto, I think. Really? Still got energy, you know? Still got energy, you know? <laughs> Still got energy, you know? ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Because we're gonna do something powerful. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> powerful. Power is the rate of work done. Yeah, you learned this before, lah. Okay? Let, let's try. Let's try. Let's try a simple question to warm you up. Lah. Tallest building in Singapore. Singapore Taipei 101. It's damage. Uh. <laughs> huh? Oblong. Oh, Oblong. Oh, wow, your definition of tall is uh, interesting. Uh. <laughs> it used to be it used to be the um, what was the building of the UOB building? Uh it's not since that was a long time taken away. It was used to be UOB, then it's overtaken by the Tanjong Baga Towers. So. Yeah, it's about, I think if I'm not wrong, 282 meters, I think. So say for example, a person does a vertical marathon, okay, 
The vertical marathon was held at uh, Swiss Hotel, which is 272. The person climbs out 272 meters, 72 stories, actually 73 stories. Uh, guess what's the timing? World record timing to climb up the 72 story building? The Stan Westin Stanford, the Swiss Hotel? Huh? Work what them? <laughs> That's elevator already. Uh. 6 minutes 52 seconds. Okay? Now, if you divide out, it means that every story he took about 6 seconds. Every story. That's three, story, three seconds every flight. Every flight, huh? That means at the 60 to 70 story, three seconds every flight. Eh? It's actually very demanding. Very demanding. So imagine the person is 60 kg. Find the power of the athlete. Athlete. Oh, you did before. Where? At the Pinnacle. Oh, Pinnacle. That's the Duxton. Pinnacle. Oh, how how was the experience? Do you black out or not? <laughs> I did mine over here. I I. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Basically, dad, you <laughs> come on. Hey, but but pinnacle is yeah because the, the stairwell is very very tight. Yeah, so <laughs> who cares about K? Yeah, correct. Right? Because you start from rest, you end at rest. Ah, you start at rest, you end at rest. I I went for this one at the end of the whole uh, when I hit the helipad. Uh, tunnel vision. Uh, Ah, no vision away, it's like <laughs> There's not enough blood coming uh. It's just it's just tunnel vision. Yeah, I did the you know like SG fifteen uh -huh. the, the the one where like where like um have you heard of Lin Mi Huat? Oh Lin Mi Huat he did like the super marathon. Uh. He yeah, went he yeah, did a fifty times fifty. Times yeah. 50. Oh okay, he did the fifty times fifty. Amazing like that fella. He's like sixty plus years old and still running and running and running. Superman like that, that fella, Superman. Amazing at his age, oh, gosh. Some people at his age are like in the hospital for knee replacement surgery and stuff already. Oh. Yeah. So, people, what's the power? About. Yep, about three eighty to four. You. You you find that professional athletes is somewhere between three fifty to four fifty. That, that's that's on average any major activity that requires the legs. Most of the professional athletes will be deliver, able to deliver this around this range of power. Yeah? So for professional cyclists, those kind of tour de France kind of about 400 plus. Yeah? Those that climb mountain, I don't know whether you watch Tour de France. It's crazy cycling competition. Every day they cycle for five hours and it's not five hours flat, it's five hours up the hill sometimes. And it's not Bukitima Hill kind of hill. Uh. The hill runs thousands of meters kind, thousand meter, two thousand meter kind. So you just imagine climbing Mount Faber 30 times or thing. <laughs> on bike. <laughs> and, and this is not like, uh, this is like, zzz, 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 zzz. It's crazy. Uh. So you tell me that, I don't know how they can recover in time. Uh. Okay, this is the simple side of power. Is there a more difficult side of power? <laughs> Of course there is, but, but relax. Right? I'm not going to give it. Just let, let's try another simple one. Yeah, just add a twist of it. A car, 1,200 kg. Um, power, say, 200 kilowatts. Find the time it takes to travel to 100 km per hour. Try. Careful, huh? Okay, uh, <laughs> careful, uh. You must convert kg to grams, right? <laughs> must convert kg to grams, right? It starts a rest. Good question. It starts a rest. How? Oh, correct or Convert kg to grams. <laughs> half the K is half times thousand two times hundred square, right? 
<laughs> Do you know how to the, 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 the short way of converting km per hour to meters per second? You just divide by 3.6, yeah. You just divide by 3.6. Yeah. Meter per second to km per hour times 3.6. Yeah, don't, don't need to go through the thousand thing. Like it's you work it out, it's divided by 3.6. Yeah. <laughs> How? Anyone? What's the time? Sorry? 2.1. Oh, 2.31. What is this? That's a hypercar. Area. 2.31 seconds. Yeah, there's a hypercar really, for sure. There's a sports car, a sports car wannabe, and um, then there is a supercar, and then there's hypercar. This is in the hypercar category. Anything below 4 seconds is supercar. Anything below 3 seconds is hypercar. Really. F1. F1. 0 to 100. Guess what's the time? 1.9 seconds. 1.9 seconds. That means 100 km power already. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone disagree with 2.31? You got a different answer? Am I okay? Okay, good. Now remember that remember that I wanted to give you something kebabums. Yeah? Remember I wanted to give you kebabum stuff? <laughs> okay. Let me set up the kebabum thing. No, 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 relax. It's one spring in three different stages. <laughs> relax, it's one spring in three different stages. Okay, now, I'm not sure whether you know about this. It is, okay. The force in a spring is equal to kx, where x is the extension, yeah? In this case, extension. So the bigger you extend the spring by, the bigger the force. Makes sense, huh? right? So, but if you take a look at this uh, force across x, it means that the graph will look like this. That means that if I were to have um, a mass extending the object, the spring by, um, uh, if I load this spring with a mass m at this point of time, if this is x naught, do you agree that the force should be mg because it's not moving anymore? Yeah, so the energy stored over here is going to be equal to mg times half times x naught, which is half mg x naught. This is also what we learned just now. The area under fx graph is the energy. Yeah, is the work done, which means this is the energy stored in the spring. Cool. Now this is the part. What's the potential energy lost by the mass? I lose mgx0, but I only store half mgx0. Where did the half mgx0 go to? <laughs> yeah, you, understand, you must understand the setup. Huh? First of all, based on what we learned, I mean, this is something I introduced to you. The spring force is fkx, huh? it goes like this. So if, if it is loaded with a mass m, it goes down, it hangs there, the force in the spring must be mg and extends by x0. However, the GPE loss is mg x0. Energy stored in the spring is half mg x0. So we have successfully destroyed energy. Whoa. Uh, uh. <laughs> we have successfully destroyed energy. Uh. <laughs> so how? Einstein is going to be very, very unhappy. He's going to jump out of his grave. Because he says energy cannot be destroyed or created. No, it is not. At the top, it is. I would. I was just putting the mass on the spring, then letting it go down. So this is the original length. I'm just putting the mass there and then let it come down. 
Oh, the force starts from zero because this is at this point. There's no force in the spring. Make sense? Original length, yes, correct. Then you just put the mass there, attach it, and then let it come down. If you think this is the only case, uh, look at this. <laughs> look at this, huh? If you think this is the only case, no, it is not. In there are many other cases in real life, this annoying factor of half comes into picture. Let me show you. We began with the sand example, remember? You know, Beverly Low came in and for some of you, it's about booms. Uh, this is not F equals to MA. You load sand. Okay? So if I were to have sand loaded onto the belt which travels at a constant speed of V, it will be half mv squared over time. That's the Ke gain. Equals to this. Make sense? Okay, no, no trick. Huh? This one no trick. This is half mv squared upon time. That means if I load a mass m in time t, this will be the rate of gain of Ke. Yeah, make sense? Half mv squared divided by time. m loaded in time t. Now let's take a look from the other perspective. Huh? Yeah. A K of the sand, gain by the sand. Yeah, because the sand drops onto the belt and then it gains speed, right? So it's a K gain by the sand. Now let's take a look at this. Um, work done by the belt or power delivered by the belt across time. So do you agree that therefore this is equal to force times displacement over time? Still here. <laughs> Still here.